And it's a huge, huge opportunity for all businesses to be able to look at computing resources completely differently. This happens to be a, a, a MacBook Air that I've, I've always lusted for. One of these days, maybe I'll get one. But it essentially has no hard drive. It has a load of memory. It has a, a bandwidth connection. And the whole point is you're going to connect to the internet to do all your work anyway. On the right is somebody's idea of a prototype of what the Google Chrome operating system is going to look like. This could, in fact, replace all the desktop operating systems. But all of this is there to do is to simply connect you to the internet. All the actual applications you run will, will literally execute someplace else and they display on your machine. This is happening and it's happening quickly. But it's not just PCs, it's not just laptops. There's all sorts of mobile devices, all kinds of handheld devices that are becoming increasingly important already. There's somewhere on the order of around a billion or so um, connected computers on the internet, meaning people that have access to laptops or desktops and they get on the computer. But there's four billion, four, four billion mobile phones. And many of these mobile phones have at least the ability to do text messaging and if not, much more advanced things. So already if you go to places like uh, China and India, certain places like Brazil where there's a heavy use of social media, the preponderance of the connectivity is actually via mobile devices, not through uh, personal computers. Only us in the affluent countries can do that. You can also see, um, I'm, I'm glad somebody's going to win a Kindle. I love my Kindle. And I never thought I would, but I bought one when the Kindle 2 came out because it's like, this is intriguing. I read a ton of stuff. Let me see if this actually works for me. And again, it's not one of these things I find that I read everything on the Kindle. I still like a book now and then. In fact, Dan Brown just released his book yesterday. I'm getting one today. It will be a hardback and I will read it. But I have shifted a tremendous amount of what I do to the Kindle because I'll tell you what, the two and a half hours it took to fly here yesterday, I had everything I ever wanted to read on my Kindle and it was wonderful and the experience is great. But what they've done, which is really intriguing about it, is it's not just a display device. It's a whole ecosystem. It's a whole solution. So the reason, and I, again, my partner MJ, this is one of the things he says it's not too smart, being the marketing guy and the creative guy. He thinks, well, the iPod wins because it's the best, you know, it's got the best design. Okay, fine, it's a nice design, but is it really great? Is it that much better than anything else? Or is the fact that it's coupled with iTunes and the iTunes store, and it gives you a seamless front to back solution. And that's what the Kindle does. It gives you a seamless store, an easy way to buy. I want to buy that book. One minute later, I have the entire book. That's why it succeeds. And we're going to find lots of opportunities for that. And we talk about, um, okay, how do we in integrate uh, our platforms for maybe marketing automation, but to all these electronic platforms. There's lots and lots of opportunities. Now let me quickly go through a couple things that are fairly cutting edge out there. This is a site and I highly encourage you to take a look at this. What this does is it aggregates a whole bunch of different things. It aggregates Twitter and Facebook and a number of other sites, and this is constantly giving you real-time messages. So I know somebody in the back is monitoring the Twitter account, right? Um, looking for the hashtag for MIS09. There you go. Well, this thing will search all the sites and just keep a real-time running dialogue of what's happening uh, based on my terms. This is an important and an important part of our future. This is an example of a of something that's going to become really important in about a month or two months. Has anybody used or seen Google Wave? See, at least some people know what it is. And this is a product from Google that's a result of an attempt to literally transform what it means to collaborate and communicate by creating very integrated um, document management, um, collaboration, uh, being able to have multiple people in a conversation, and it's got a very open API. So I think a year from now, just like we're talking about Twitter this year, next year we're going to be talking about Wave. Quickly, real, does anybody know the term semantic web and structured data? Okay, a few people. So this is a really interesting example of how that's going to be important at some point. I don't know how quickly this is going to happen, but it's one thing to have information out on the web, paragraphs of information. It's another thing to have knowledge and data. And a properly constructed website with structures built in to be able to allow web applications to understand this is an address, this is a phone number, 
This is a discussion. This is a calendar event. And to be able to make sense out of that, this is the kind of thing you could do. Um, Stephen Wolfram's a, a, one of these ridiculously bright guys, lives in Champaign, Illinois, and he created uh, Mathematica many years ago. This is a result of, of, of their efforts right now to collect and to actually create a semantic web of knowledge for very specific areas. So you can go to this and I can ask real questions. So when I go in and say, I want to know what the mean temperature in uh, Dubai is in, you know, I don't know, June. It doesn't just come back with a bunch of links to websites. It actually goes off, looks at the data, and then gives you graphs and gives you charts and really tries to make sense out of it. So this is the stuff that's happening right now that soon is going to dramatically impact what we do. You know, believe it or not, there is tons of marketing applications here. You think about, well, maybe part of what I'm trying to do is to put information out uh, so that I can get people to call me back and I'm going to do kind of a soft sell by providing them the knowledge and then, oh, by the way, you want to buy a product. That's increasingly important. And what if I told you that um, these systems can actually be used to not only tell us information, but tell us how people feel? And that's what this does. Um, about a year ago or so, I read a book by Stephen Baker called The Numerati. And he pointed to this company. And that company was since bought by J.D. Power. But what it essentially does is it continually scans all sorts of blog sites, all sorts of Facebook conversations, and tries to do some very intense analysis of the words people use, the phrases people use, to try to get a sense of what they're thinking, what they're feeling. And to be able to do things, I can go in and say, I want to know today what people are thinking about my new flavor of Diet Coke. And this will be able to come back with an indication of what the broad internet population is really thinking. This is very intriguing. But what's going to happen is um, everything's going to become very, very integrated. The next step of everything that we do here is all about integration. It's about not only are there a plethora of social networking websites and search engines, but I want to be able to connect these in an intelligent way. So here's an example of a very, very simple way you could do that. This is, an, this is a demo of a, of a custom web application that uses Facebook Connect. Anybody know Facebook Connect or have ever used it? You see a lot of websites popping up now that so you can connect with Facebook Connect. Essentially what it does allows you to do your face, use your Facebook credentials to be able to log in, but then also maybe move data back and forth. This is a really simple example, but the idea is that it's a running site where I log all my daily runs. And then once you do that, it'll post it on Facebook for you. Oh, by the way, it knows your social graph, so it'll grab all the other people that are out there that have also used this application and pulls information down and displays that as well. Very, very simple example, but um, it's a great example of integration. This is something that's actually available right now from Salesforce.com. How many people use or your clients use Salesforce? This is a part of Salesforce called the Service Cloud. And what they're doing is that they're allowing your Salesforce instance to be integrated to the different social networks, basically, for the most part, uh, Twitter and, uh, and Facebook. But what they're doing here is they're demonstrating these are, the, these are the tweets that are going on that have to do with something I'm interested in for my company, based on hashtags, based on phrases, based on brand names. And then those can be automatically be used to generate activities within Facebook. They can be used as a platform to be able to do customer service and write back. And, uh, if anybody follows a lot of the stuff, you've probably heard the, the little case study about Comcast Cares. Anybody familiar with this? About a year ago, or last fall anyway, um, a guy named Frank Ellison started using Twitter and monitoring, listen to what people say, and then started using Twitter literally for customer support and tech support. And it's become a fairly famous case study because they did a really, really good job of being responsive. Now they have a whole team, probably a dozen different people. Turns out, two weeks ago, I had a problem with my cable modem. I tried calling, 800 number, could get nowhere. Spent a lot of time. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna contact Comcast Cares. That initiated a whole series of online discussions, and then last Saturday when I was home, and I'm still trying to resolve some of the issues, I literally get a call. Hi, this is Frank at Comcast. And it's Frank Ellison from Comcast Cares. And they fixed the damn problem. Okay? So my entire interaction was via Twitter. And so for people that don't get Twitter, there's, don't get it or what it's useful for, there's a great example of what it's used for. Here's a site that's interesting. So if you go to skittles.com website, 
the, the only part of the website that's really theirs is